In the world of writing, there are a lot of options. Different software offers lots of different features and ways you can interact with your story. But how do you choose, and which is best? In this video, we will introduce you to the program Scrivener, our favorite and the one we recommend to tell your epic tale. Welcome to Writing Quest. Hello everyone, welcome to Writing Quest. My name is Brendan Pugh, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about setting up Scrivener for writing success. Huzzah! All right, so we're just going to jump right into the computer. First thing you'll want to do is go to File, Start a New Project. That'll bring up this screen. This particular screen is a template that I put together so that it um, starts a new project with a three-act structure already built into it. We'll go over that in a different video, not this particular one. So let's just kind of walk through some of the layout here. So we've got the sidebar here, and this is kind of where you interact with or all the things that are a part of your project. This is the manuscript, new novel, and under the manuscript, you can have folders, which I generally use folders as chapters, and then inside those, you can have more folders folders, and then you can have scenes or documents. So you have the folder level, you can do as many nested folders as you need, and then you can also do the documents, and so you can have documents within the folders. How I generally break it down is we start with having Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, so we have a folder for each of those. When you twirl it down, you get chapter folders, and each folder to me is a chapter. You can do it a lot of ways where you could just have different scenes as chapters, but I like to break my chapters down when I'm writing to have the scenes broken up a little bit so I can focus a little more. It seems to work best for me. Each folder is a chapter, and then in there you have the scenes, which is where you actually write the words. After the manuscript, you have a bucket for characters, places, and front matter. This is the credits and copyright and all that kind of stuff, so we won't worry about that. The main ones are characters and places. Come down here, you have a notes and research section. And that's where you can keep everything um, if you're doing any research for your book. So you're researching Manhattan because your story takes place in Manhattan. You can put it here, keep it there to access when you need it. Templates is a interesting one where you can make template. These come with the Scrivener program already. You get a character sketch and a setting sketch and anything you put in this template sheets bucket goes here. When you come up here, you can hit the little twirl down on the plus menu and then you have those here. So anytime you want to do a new character sketch, you can just use the template button and add it there. That's the sidebar. Let's go into some of these top bar features. We already kind of I talked about the plus sign. You have the plus sign here that can add your templates or can add a new text or a new folder as you're kind of plotting things out in your novel. Also, you, anything you want to do here, you can just drag around, drag and drop, pretty easy, pretty standard. You have a delete button. You have a insert file button or insert footmark, comments link. This is where you put stuff in. If you come over here, if you hover over the little bar here, it gives you a word count. So it'll give you a word count for the session and it'll give you a word count for the document. And you can also search if you click it. These three buttons here are your different views in Scrivener. So you can click here and turn on the group sub documents. And basically, whatever you have selected, it'll just put everything here. So if you just select this, it'll only show you these two chapters. Just like this, only to show you those two scenes. And let me just show you a little bit of what that looks like. To test, test, and we'll put something here. Test, test, and then if you go back, so it shows me those two documents in line. If you go here, it'll show me those two documents in line plus the folder. And if you go here, of course, it shows me the folders and the, you know, it basically just puts everything all in a line for you. The next view is the corkboard view. And this is my favorite view because you can do a lot of things here. So you can click into different sub areas. So if you go just to your whole manuscript, it'll show you Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. This is really nice for outlining if you want to use Scrivener for outlining, which I, I use Notion, but I would recommend you can use Scrivener as well. It's a great way to do it. It breaks everything down by your folder. So if you just want to kind of type in a little brief description of Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, that's great. And then, of course, when you jump into the Act 1, it'll show you your different chapters. So you can line up more chapters that way. You can add some more, drag it in there. And then you have another chapter. And now you have three chapters. You can rearrange them that way. Um, really, really nice way to mess around with the order of your scenes, order of your chapters. And then, of course, if you go into a chapter it'll show you the sub documents within that chapter. So if you have scenes within your chapters, you can rearrange those as well. Plus you can continue the outlining process by adding those descriptions or the outlines of those different scenes or chapters. 
The other cool thing about this view is you can do a couple of different things. So if you go all the way down here to the bottom right corner, you have this button, which keeps the cards arranged in a grid, keeps them locked in place. If you click here, this is a free form cork board. So you can just, you know, if this would be really good for brainstorming, you can just come up with more ideas, click them in there as you see fit. It's a really cool way to do that. And then of course you can switch back between those two views. And then you have this arrange by label view. The labels are really cool way you kind of break it up a lot of ways you could label things you could use labels for chapters you could use the labels for characters or character arcs or people places things anything you want and then you can drag things between the labels this is a really great way as you're outlining your story to check pacing. If you label everything with which characters are where or which places they're at or what events are going on if you go into this view It'll show you this breakdown, and then essentially as you scroll along it, you can kind of see, oh, I've spent too much time with this character, or we've been in this place a long time, now we need to jump out. Really just a great way to see the pacing of your story. And then, of course, if you go over here to this last one, Corkboard Options, this gives you a bunch of options for card size, you can make it bigger or smaller, ratios if you want your cards to be a bit longer, if you have a lot of text on them, spacing, close them together, make them far apart. Those are kind of your options here. So to get to that view, let's go over it again. You click this button. Down here is where you have your different options for how you'd like to view things. The next super useful view that you have is this outline view. And this is a really cool view for checking all the information of your story. So it shows everything just in a hierarchical list. If you right click up here on the toolbar, you can change a bunch of different pieces of information you wanna see, which is really cool. And then of course, if you go in here and say we add a couple of descriptions, test here and hello, how are you? And huzzah. Then when you come back to this view, it also gives you your description. So basically, it's a great way to see how your chapters look, how many scenes are in each chapter, descriptions for everything. It's just you can go through your whole story and you can see every little piece of information you could possibly need to know about it, how many words each chapter is, um, what type it is, what labels you put on it, all that kind of stuff. It's a really great view. So what I, how I would recommend setting this up for yourself is having your manuscript, a new novel, and then put in three folders, Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. And then within those, you can do your chapter folders. You could also, I've done this with some of my other books when I get to act two, if I have a bunch of different events, I'll break up subfolders for each event and then put the chapter folders in those if I feel it's necessary. Finally, within the chapter folders, you have the different scenes within the chapters. I really like that feature because sometimes when writing, it's nice to be able to break it down. I really like doing that because sometimes when I'm actually writing the narrative, I really like to break it down so I know like I'm just focusing on the beginning here and now I'm just focusing on this part and this part. It's really going to come in handy um, if you've seen my Notion videos. I have on there the scene blocking. So what I plan to do once I move my book into Scrivener is each of those scene blocking moments is going to become a scene card in Scrivener, I can just focus on writing that section and then I can blend it all together later, if that makes sense. That's how I would recommend structuring that. I would make sure that you set up any templates you want, character sketches, setting sketches, places, any of that stuff. So those are readily available for you. And then you'll go ahead and jump into writing and we will get into that in a different episode. I hope you learned something in this video. I really hope that you choose Scrivener as the writing program of choice. There's a lot of really great ones out there. I've used a lot of them and I personally think that Scrivener is the best one with because of all the different options that it has. Please comment. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's see what you like and don't like, what your favorite parts of Scrivener are, or if you have other programs you really like, let's talk about that in the comments below. And like, share this video, subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. And we'll see you next time on Writing Quest. Huzzah!